Today my interest was piqued by low carb blogs. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. I thought I would go out into the internet and see what these low carb bloggers are talking about, what kind of backgrounds they have, if they have any scientific training, or they just have a blog up and are just blogging about whatever. So I gathered a list and I visited the first 10. It's striking the number of people who are high in body weight and have a lot of body fat. And universally, they all say they don't want to count their calories. And they also talk about the fact that they hit walls or they stall in their weight loss. And some even admit to wanting to get an exercise program going, but they just can't get their act together to do that. I ran into one blog where he was looking at low-carb low myths and why we shouldn't do it. One of the arguments was that low-carb diets, high-protein diets, cause the bones to lose calcium. Now this is not true. It never was true. What was shown many years ago is that when they put subjects on protein powder, protein powder, that that caused the bones to leach calcium, but when fed meat, the bones lost no calcium and there was no greater amount of calcium in the urine. So that fell apart, as it often does. Then that blogger went on to tell us about ketone bodies and other aspects of the low-carb diet. And the idea, of course, that calories don't count. So the quality of these bloggers doesn't seem to be very high to me. I don't know what kind of advice you can actually acquire from them about this whole pro process of low carbing. And it's surprising the number of people who talk about well, this guy talked about not eating meat. Now, I don't know how you would do that very well on a low-carb diet. And others talk about adding vegetables and some fruits into their diet. And they count their grams of carb and list them. And I don't know if they're doing any of this counting correctly. I know that people do not count their calories correctly. I mean, that's a well-established fact. So I'm not expecting any higher level of performance from the low carb people who argue that they are counting them accurately. In my life I haven't seen many people count their carbs or calories accurately whether whatever diet they're on. So the quality of these low carb bloggers is in my opinion so far in the first 10 that I've visited very low and you're not going to get any solid information. I don't know which ones you subscribe to if any at all. I try and give a lot of solid scientific information out on my blogs and on my website so you can get the real facts also in my books. So you'll know what you're doing, you know how to do it. Now yesterday's discussion was about meal planning and recipes and I gave my opinions on that and I hope that somebody takes that to heart and tries that out and reports back about what happened when they went out and bought a recipe book and then applied low carb counting to designing recipes that were low carb or meals that were low carb. That'll be pretty interesting. I think that's a good idea. And the other important point I just made it and I'm going to reiterate it is the level of overweight in these low carbers, which flies in the face of what Gary told has told us in his recent book. He, he acts as if if you restrict your carbohydrates, you will attain a normal weight, a lean weight, and you will become lean. And all these people attest to the nonsense that's implicit in that statement. So, as we've seen, as I've discussed, Taubes is not really full of good information. He gets himself really stuck. And, of course, a lot of people believe him because they can't evaluate what he's written. They don't have the background and the training to evaluate the things he says, so they just blindly accept his story. And that's why I'm trying to counter that story with good scientific information that is good, not bad, as Tall might argue. So that's today's story. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis, signing off.